So as a fun end of week code kata, I thought I would try to create a hesitation directive in Angular 714. Uh, the idea behind a hesitation directive would be that uh, if I moused into a target and left my mouse hovering over that target for some period of time, such that I was hesitating to take further action, uh, this directive would emit an event that I could use to then update the UI. So for example, imagine we have a buy button here and uh, I can click it, it's all good. Um, but the idea is that if I were to mouse into this button and leave my mouse there, you can see that I can urge the user at some time in the future, come on, buy this already. So let's take a quick look at how this might work. Here's my app component, and here is the button that we just saw. And you can see that I'm binding to a hesitate output event. And when the user hesitates, I'm going to show the message, which is this message down here, come on, buy it already. And because this is a directive, it means that we can also have dynamic input bindings, which means that we can make this hesitation configurable such that I can tell it how long to wait before triggering the hesitate event. In this case, I'm using that duration input property to say a thousand milliseconds. And then if I click, I can just hide it. Uh, the code for the app component's pretty simple. All we're doing is setting uh, the Boolean value for showing the message. So again, the hesitate is the directive it emits the hesitate event, which I'm then using to show the, uh, the message. Now, there is no hesitate event natively in the browser, obviously, so what we have to do is we have to synthesize this hesitate concept based on uh, an aggregation of native events. In this case, we're gonna be using things like mouse leave, mouse enter, mouse down, and timer. Now, naively, I could just bind to those things using the regular host bindings, um, but we would end up triggering more change detection life cycles than is necessary. So just to quickly take this as an aside, if we look at the app component here, you'll see that I'm implementing the do check angular life cycle method. The do check method gets called whenever the uh, uh, given component should check to see if data has changed. In other words, it gets called whenever there's a change detection life cycle. Now what you'll notice is that here if I, uh, if I click on the button, you can see we're triggering change detections. Furthermore, if I hover and pause, you can see that when we show the message, we trigger a change detection here as well. Um, but what you'll notice is that when I mouse over and mouse out of the button, there is no ng do change. And that's because in the hesitate directive, we're taking special care to bind the mouse leave, mouse enter, and various timers in or outside of the Angular zone such that when they get triggered, they don't also trigger Angular's change detection lifecycle. So let's take a look at our directive to see how that might work. So here is my hesitate directive, and you can see that um, uh, its selector is the hesitate attribute, which also acts as the output event binding, which I'm aliasing internally as the hesitate events to make it a little bit more clear. Um, you can see that I have the input binding for duration such that I can customize the duration that the user has to hover before we trigger the hesitate event. Uh, but now let's take a look at how those events are being managed because again, we wanna be careful not to trigger too much change detection in our Angular application. So in order to do this, I have to inject the ng zone instance and then when we initialize the application, you can see that I'm using that ng zone instance to initialize my event handlers outside of the Angular zone. By doing this, it means that when the renderer here calls listen, which is calling add event listener under the hood, we're gonna bind these event handlers, handle mouse enter, handle mouse down, handle mouse leave, outside of the Angular zone, which means all the code that's contained within those handlers will also be bound outside of the Angular zone. And as I mouse, into and mouse out of and click within the contextual host, I'm not triggering change detection. Now, in this case, the directive works by setting up a timer when the user mouses into the particular element. This set timeout is also, again, being bound outside of the Angular zone, and I'm waiting till that timer uh, passes that duration threshold. And if we look at that method, what you'll see is that it eventually calls emit on our event emitter here to emit the hesitate event. Now, because the hesitate event may change state in the calling context in our app component, we have to step back into the Angular zone using the run guarded method. 
This way, this method gets called inside uh, of something that Angular is aware of, and therefore Angular then emits, or uh, sorry, Angular then triggers a change detection lifecycle after this callback is applied, which means that any changes created or precipitated by this emit will get picked up and reconciled against the few templates. Now, uh, something else that I thought was just kind of interesting, though I don't demonstrate it in this demo at all, is that I'm also exporting the hesitate directive as hesitation, which means that in my app component here, I could have done something like ref equals hesitation, and it, this ref would now contain uh, a reference to the hesitate directive itself. And the reason I thought that was interesting is because I could then theoretically call the public cancel method on the hesitate directive, such that if there was a more intricate user interaction, such as the user mousing into some uh, embedded element, then I could turn around and cancel any pending hesitation timer. Again, I'm not showing that in the demo, but I'm just explaining it here because I thought it was kind of an interesting aspect. Um, I don't get to use export as a whole lot, so I'm always uh, uh, excited to find ways that it might be a value add in my Angular applications. So all in all, again, uh, the contents of the directive here are fairly simple. All we're really doing is binding a couple of mouse events, uh, managing a timer, and then emitting a hesitate event. And again, this is not a native browser event. This is a, uh, an Angular event, an Angular directive event. So it doesn't propagate up through the uh, DOM tree or anything like that. Uh, and I'm then binding to that in the app component here so that I can show a message urging the user to follow through with the purchase if it looks like they want to perform the purchase but are being hesitant. So anyway, happy Friday. I thought that was a fun little exploration and uh, hopefully inspired you to play with some of the Angular features.